Finding the perfect microphone for your home office or studio can be a real challenge. If you follow this channel, you know the struggle is real. Testing, 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 one, two, three. In today's video, I'm gonna test out every single microphone that I've purchased over the past two or three years. They range anywhere from $20 all the way up to $700, and I've got a total of 20 microphones. I will put timestamps in the video, so feel free to jump around. I purchased all of them with my own money, so I have not been influenced in any way, shape, or form by any of these companies. There are a ton of people out there that are looking to keep their audio fairly simple without much manipulation in post. I'm not saying that EQ, compression, noise gaining, et cetera, isn't important, but I do find it cumbersome and a huge time suck for a non-professional like myself. In addition, I don't have the luxury of converting a spare bedroom into a proper home studio. Instead, I'm literally stuck in this tiny space underneath the stairs with lots of funky angles. You can see over here. So some quick housekeeping notes on how I've conducted these tests. All audio is being recorded into a Zoom F6 32-bit float, 48 kilohertz. Audio will be synced up with my FX3 in post using timecode. Side note, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how I do use timecode, I will put a link to a video up here that explains it in a lot more detail. I'll do my best to get all of the levels set properly into the Zoom F6, but there are no guarantees, so I may have to move them up or down a little bit in post just to normalize the volume. I will not be applying any type of processing. This is the raw audio. Lastly, I am not Banjo, so I'm probably going to make a ton of mistakes. If I do, please let me know down in the comments. I'm just a guy recording a video underneath my staircase with about 250 subscribers. Speaking of which, this video is being sponsored by the subscribe and like button. It is 100% free. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, the audio that you're listening to right now is the one that's straight out of the camera. Again, this is a Sony FX3. And the reason why I started off with this is because it's what everyone has. It is built into cameras, but as most people know, camera audio is not particularly good. The preamps are weak and there's a lot of noise in them. So unless it's really for scratch audio, I would definitely not recommend using the camera audio or the microphones built into the camera, unless again, you're in a pinch. Okay, first up on our list is the Sony ECM LV1. This is a lavalier microphone that I purchased at Best Buy for, I think it was around $30. And I actually use this one quite a bit. I don't think it sounds particularly good indoors, but it does sound pretty decent outside. So if that's something that you're looking for, uh, it is a good solution. The only thing I wish it had is it only has this like foam cover on it. Uh, I'm sure they sell aftermarket, like a, a wind muff, like it, which is what I have right now on my track E, but still for 30 bucks, it is a phenomenal deal. It's a great solution for a lot of folks and it's readily available at your local Best Buy. All right, let's jump on to the next one. Okay, next up on our list is the Mackie EM89D. This is a dynamic microphone, it's a cardioid polar pattern, and I absolutely love the sound that I get out of this particular microphone. You know what I don't love though? The handling noise. You might even be able to hear it already and I haven't even done anything, but if you, you just hear, like as I'm gripping this particular microphone, the handling noise is just unbearable. So it, I guess if it's in a shock mount, which I've done in the past, and it sounds really, really good in that shock mount, but most people are not going to do that. They're gonna hold this microphone just like I'm holding it right now, and that handling noise is just killer. Now, it is only, I wanna say around $50, that's how much I paid for it, so it is a great deal, especially if it's gonna be in a locked off position. You could put it on a boom arm if you wanted to. Nice thing about this particular microphone is that it does not require phantom power. So, in addition to that, it's the uh, power needs are not particularly uh, high. So I have, again, this going straight into the Zoom F6. I have no cloud lifter, I've got no mic booster, nothing. It's literally just being powered from the uh, Zoom F6 and I've only got it turned up about three quarters of the way. So for a dynamic microphone, that is impressive. So between the great sound and the low power consumption, it is a fantastic microphone just to get started with. However, if you do plan on using this in situations where you're going to be handling the microphone pretty routinely, you know, out there in the field or doing interviews or something along those lines, there are better options out there and I would definitely not recommend this one. All right, speaking of that, let's move on to the next one. Okay, next on our list here is the Rode Video Micro. I've owned this one for probably the longest time out of any of these microphones that I'm testing here today. It is considered officially a shotgun microphone, but it's not 
particularly great in terms of being a shotgun, but it is certainly better than the microphones that you would find within a camera itself. It is a cardioid pattern, so it does a decent job of blocking audio from the rear of the microphone, but it's a very entry-level shotgun microphone, and it does require some type of power. So right now, again, I have this going into the F6. It sounds pretty good, I guess. Um, not great, but you know, it's better, again, better than your standard microphone that you would find find in the camera itself. And the price on this, it's $60. I think they do go on sale for a little bit less than that, but when I bought it, it was around, right around $60. All right, next one. Okay, now you're listening to the Rode Lavalier Go. I've also had this one for a long time. In fact, I've used it previously with my Rode Wireless Go, the original one, the Wireless Go, and then also the Rode Wireless Go 2 system, which we're gonna get to eventually, but this is okay. I'm actually listening to it right now and I'm hearing a lot of noise in the headphones and I'm not quite sure why that is because I do have it plugged in directly into the F6, so I'm not quite sure why there's a lot of noise. But this is an omnidirectional, again, kind of a standard lav mic. It sounds pretty decent, um, but indoors, I found that lav mics in this particular space don't sound all that great, and I'm sure you would probably agree if you're you know, listening to this particular video. Anyways, uh, that is the Rode Lavalier Go. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now you're listening to the Rode Lavalier 2. This is the newer version of that microphone that you were just listening to, the Lavalier Go. And I find this one is much better. And just listening to it in the headphones, I can hear that it's got way less noise than that Lavalier Go. So maybe that Lavalier Go is, maybe it needs to go. Um, but it's dev that maybe there's something wrong with that, but this is much cleaner, much nicer. Again, it is a lav mic, so it doesn't sound particularly great in this particular office. It does sound decent enough outdoors, and that's really where it's probably meant to be used in the first place. The one thing I will say about this particular microphone is that it faces one direction versus the other, or, or it's, you know, the, the, the capsule is on one side versus the other as opposed to being on the top, so you do have to take some care when placing it on your lapel because you don't know which way it's it's facing. In fact, I didn't look to see which way it's facing. So let's take this off and let's take a look. And of course I had it wrong. So it was facing me and that is the biggest issue with this particular microphone. So let me just show you here. So can you see, that's the back. That's what, that's what was facing me. And that's the front. That's what should have been facing out. So let's try it again now with it properly facing out. Okay, now it's positioned the proper way with the capsule facing out. Does it sound any different? Does it sound exactly the same? Does it even matter? For, I think it's $80 I paid for this. $79.99, something like that. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. So anyways, this is the Rode Lavalier 2 lav mic that you're listening to being recorded on the Zoom F6. All right, next one. Okay, next on our list is the Sennheiser MKE 200. So the Sennheiser MKE 200 is a condenser microphone and it is a super cardioid pattern. So it does a very good job of, re of uh, rejecting anything that's coming from the rear of the microphone, which is nice. Now I use this particular microphone on, on my GoPro. I have it attached to the media mod and I, it never gets removed from this. That's why I still have it on here, but I do have it plugged into my Zoom F6 just so you can see that uh, this is actually how I use that. So it fits nicely on the GoPro. And I'm talking behind it right now so you can see how good the rejection is compared to the front of the microphone so now if I was go if I, you know if I was if I was GoPro if I was vlogging with this particular camera now I am facing the GoPro and that is what the audio would sound like so quite a difference you know it's uh, I find this particular microphone it's nice it's small it's obtrusive has a it comes with the wind muff and it's only a hundred dollars so I think for a hundred bucks it's the perfect companion for a GoPro I don't know I mean I guess you could throw it on a regular camera as well but I think there are better options out there for $100 to throw on a camera as opposed to this particular one. But that's your jam, go for it. So anyways, that is the uh, Sennheiser MKE 200 Condenser Super Cardioid. Let's jump on to the next one. All right, now we're getting into some more serious microphones, if you will. 
Right now you're listening to the Rode Pod Mic. This is a dynamic microphone and it is a cardioid polar pattern. I have a love-hate relationship with this particular microphone. I think it looks awesome, it feels awesome, it just exudes quality workmanship for $100. This is an awesome microphone. What I don't like about the microphone is that I think my voice in particular sounds terrible on it. It sounds very nasally, it is a very mid-forward uh, microphone, and it just does not sound particularly good on my voice. I've tried to EQ it, I've tried to do anything and everything to get it sound better, and I did get it to sound better, but I hear other people with this microphone and I think it sounds great. <laughs> and I, when I use it, I am like, nope pass. So uh, this was one of the first microphones that I did buy for the, the home office here. And I did use it for a little bit, but you know, even going back and watching some of those videos, I now realize that this is definitely not a good fit for my voice in particular. And I have no idea what octave I am. I have no idea about any of that stuff. All I know is that it just did not sound very good. And it still doesn't sound very good. In fact, I'm listening to it in the headphones and I'm thinking like, oh, this is just not for me. But it might be for you. So do not let my voice any in any way like influence your decision whether to get this microphone or not because again, it is a beautiful microphone. It's heavy, it's well built, and it's got a great warranty too. I think it's got like a, at least a five year warranty I would imagine like most Rode products. And it's just a cool looking mic. So anyways, that is the Rode PodMic Dynamic Cardioid. All right, next up. Okay, next up is a pair of really interesting microphones. These are from Immersive Soundscapes. They're called the Earsight Nano Stereo Pair. They are condenser mics and they're both Omni, but you plug them in and the way that I have it set up in my F6 is that I've got uh, them set up to perform in stereo. Now they're both XLR so they go directly into the F6 which is fantastic. So I love, love, love the sound quality of these when I am out and about and I want to be discreet. These two are incredible. I do have them with these little wind muffs on there, but they're much smaller, you know, than the, than the wind muff. But they're essentially lavalier microphones. And again, they do record in stereo. Now, this company, I say company, is really, I think it's really just a guy somewhere over in France. I don't know if he's around Paris, somewhere around there. Anyways, he is like hand making these microphones. And here's the best part. With shipping and everything, I think they cost, with the conversion and everything, again, I'm in the US, he's over in, in Europe, I wanna say they're about $100 for the pair shipped to your door. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but they are fantastic. For 100 bucks, you get the stereo pair, and I just don't know of anything else there on the market that provides this level of quality. Uh, at this price point, they're just there's just no way. But what do you think of the sound of these? Uh, I love getting feedback from folks who are you know listening to this on different devices. So if these sound pretty good, uh, you know, let me know down in the comments. And also, I'm gonna put a link to his particular website where you can go and check these out on your own. All right, again, these are the immersive soundscapes Earsight Nano Stereo Pair Condenser Omni microphones. That is a mouthful, but. Let's move on to the next one. Listen, I know this looks absolutely ridiculous, but to get these microphones on this rolling backpack was a huge pain in the butt, so I'm just gonna leave them on there, and we're gonna do the test like this. So these are the standard uh, immersive sound, soundscapes, ear sight, standard microphones. And again, I've got them set up left and right, so you can see that they are essentially a stereo pair, and it's the same price as the Nano. I wanna say they're right around $100, again, shipped to your door from Europe. But I don't think they sound any different than the other ones that I just tried out, that Nano pair. So if if I'm buying one versus the other, I'd probably go with the Nano pair as opposed to these, although these are a little bit larger, maybe out in the wild, in the forest, and something like that. Uh, it would be more desirable. But for me, in the way that, that I use these, I just throw them on the backpack and I've got a little pocket here where I throw the uh, Zoom F6 into and I'm off and running and I just leave the F6 running and then I pick up all the audio that I need to so I could just literally put this backpack in front of me, fire up the FX3, even without a microphone on it, 
and get fantastic audio no matter where I am. So if it's, if I'm, you know, this is a roller, this is a big bag and it carries all of my gear. So usually I'm doing something, uh, you know, where I'm in the city or on a sidewalk where something where it's not, you know, it's very accessible, where a rolling bag like this works, but you could do the same thing with the nanos I found on like a regular backpack and that's what I've done. So typically I would attach those to the back of a regular backpack and then use the F6 in that situation. Then I just put the backpack down or I could just put the backpack on a table and then record audio into that. They're so flexible and they're XLR so they just plug directly into the Zoom F6. Now you could go even smaller instead of the F6 you could go with something like an F3 which is again a great solution 32-bit float recording you never have to worry about clipping anyways I'm rambling I'm gonna stop these are the immersive soundscapes standard ear sight condenser omnidirectional microphones let's move on to the next one all right we are moving up pretty dramatically in price so everything up to this point has been a hundred dollars or less now we are jumping straight up to two hundred fifty dollars and this is the audio technica AT897 shotgun microphone I'm not entirely sure what the polar pattern is. I want to say it's like line plus gradient, and I don't know exactly what that means, but I venture a guess it would probably be something pretty similar to a supercardioid or maybe hypercardioid, but it's very focused pattern. Um, this particular microphone I've had for about four years now, and I use it very sparingly. And part of the reason why, I just never got along with it and I'm not I'm not even sure why it's uh, it's a fine microphone I think it sounds pretty decent but when, once you actually boom it and get it out of shot like it doesn't sound particularly good in fact I'll do that now this is what it would look like if it's out of frame and I don't know I just don't I don't know that I like it <laughs> I don't know why I think it just doesn't do a great job of rejecting the room tone or the um, the reverb it doesn't it doesn't do a great job with reverb so part of it is the design of the microphone I'm sure everyone's gonna put a comment down below like hey you're an idiot like that's this type of microphone isn't supposed to be used in those situations I appreciate that but um, that is a situation that I find myself and I don't particularly care for it so anyways this is the I will say the one feature on this that is nice is it does have a uh, low cut filter where you can go in there and I think the cutoff is right around 80 Hertz maybe 100 Hertz and you can turn off uh, you, get, you get rid of any of that low rumbling which again sometimes happens especially if you're shooting out in a, a city which I, ha I happen to be in so anyways this is the Audio Technica AT897 shotgun microphone and I believe it is line plus gradient moving on to the next one all right next on our list is a $250 microphone from Rode this is the Rode uh, video mic NTG again this is $250 and I have used this microphone a ton like for the past several years, it has been like my go-to microphone for just about everything, uh, with the exception of being in the office. But for when I'm out and about, and uh, again, I didn't have, I have a different microphone on the camera right now, but uh, before I had Sony and I was using other cameras, this microphone was the best. And it still is very, very good. So again, this is the VideoMic NTG. There are so many features on this. I'm just looking at it right now. I do have the 75 hertz filter, um, low cut filter turned on. Let me turn that off here real quick. Okay, so now I have the 75 hertz low cut filter turned off. So this gives you the full spectrum of the microphone. I typically enable that because I, I, I do like to have nice clean audio. And I find like when I'm out and about, it, 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 just a lot of trucks and traffic and a lot of rumble that gets picked up on this particular microphone because it is fairly sensitive. Uh, being a condenser microphone, but the other nice thing is it does have a gain knob on the back Right here So the nice thing about that gain knob is you can control the gain right from the microphone itself instead of going into your settings Within the camera preamps now in a situation like this. I actually have tried this particular microphone in the, my home office here and it sounded pretty decent. It actually sounded better than the Audio Technica AT897, but it still didn't sound as good as something that was a little bit closer to me, right? To my voice, to my mouth, like something like this that I have on a boom arm. So, anyways, 
Uh, this is the Videomic NTG cardioid shotgun microphone. Well, let's get to the next one. I knew I would forget at least one microphone. So here we are. This is the microphone that I forgot. This is Future Brian here coming to you live with the Audio-Technica AT4040. This microphone I actually like a lot, uh, but unfortunately it catch, captures a lot of the reverb here in this particular office because of all the angles and the hard surfaces. So a condenser microphone really isn't a great solution for a small place or an untreated room like this, despite the fact that I do like the sound that comes out of it. This is a condenser microphone. It retails for I think around $300. I actually bought it used at Guitar Center for $199. So I would encourage people, Guitar Center, great finds in there. You just get to look in the used section and oftentimes they will have microphones that are deeply discounted compared to what you could buy them for brand new. But anyways, I digress. So this microphone again, I do like, but it is very sensitive and you do need to make sure that you don't talk directly into it because it is a bad microphone for plosives. So just keep it at a decent distance and maybe put it off to the side. That way you don't run into any of those issues. It does have some switches on it. I think it has just the one switch. Yeah, I think it's just got like a 10 or 20 dB pad. That is the microphone that I forgot. In fact, there may be more microphones here in my office. I'm not entirely sure, but this is one that I definitely wanted to review because it is a very good microphone for the right environment. Unfortunately, just not this one. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, we keep moving here. So right now you're listening to the Rode Wireless Go 2 wireless system. This is Wireless Go 2. And this system actually is very convenient. It comes with two transceivers in one receiver. I used to use these all the time, but I really don't anymore. Instead, I use the Tentacle Sync Track E. I find that that's much more effective for the type of work that I'm doing. It's easier since everything is synced in time code, but these are very handy. These, and these are terrific, especially for folks who are kind of run and gun type situations and have multiple people mic'd up. I say multiple, but it, you know, I have two people mic'd up. I still think they're an incredible value. They sound pretty decent. And I've got the, just the leveler microphone connected to my shirt right now. And I have it going into the Zoom F6 through the receiver. So it, I think it does introduce a little bit of noise when you do it this way, as opposed to going directly into the camera. But that's what we've chosen to do here today. So anyways, this is an omnidirectional wireless lav, and you do have the ability to input like a, a lavalier microphone. Like if I wanted to throw in, you know, like one of these lavalier microphones, I could very easily do that. In fact, this is the one that I used to use all the time. This is a lavalier go. So I used to use the lavalier go into one of these little body packs and it would be a good solution. Now, the nice thing about these particular units is that they do record the audio directly onto the um, transponder or transceiver. I'm not sure quite sure which one it is, but anyways, these little body packs here, they actually do record the audio. The challenge is that you have to properly set your levels in advance. If you don't, you will get clipping potentially if there are some dramatic increases in volume. And the one thing I don't like about Rode that they did with these is that they, they kind of advertise these as having 32-bit float. And in reality, that's just not the case. They do not record in 32-bit float. They only record in 24-bit. And then with that recording itself, you have the ability to then export the recording in 32-bit float. So it's really completely different. It's, it's, it's really just a, a gimmick in my mind. But, um, but for those folks who are looking for something to export in 32-bit float, it's a good solution. Now, I will say the other thing that is really a challenge with these is everything is done in the app, either on your iPhone or on your PC or your Mac. Uh, they don't have a whole, uh, like there are obviously buttons on these, but it's a little cumbersome to use. And unless you really know what you're doing, it's a little difficult to get these set up. But other than that, you know, for 300 bucks, I think it represents a good deal. I personally think there are some other options out there. I haven't used the DJI wireless microphone set personally, but I've seen some reviews of it and it, that seems to be like a pretty decent set, especially at that price point. So at $300, might be a little overpriced at this point. They might be maybe around 199, might be a better value for this particular pair of microphones, but it's gonna be interesting to see what uh, Rode comes out with next to be more competitive with some of the options that are out there. Oh, and the other thing that drives me bananas about these is like there is no charging case. You get to buy something separately. It's like a third party um, option. And right now it's just a pain. You get to get 
separately carry like three different cords, three different chargers. You got to plug into different blocks. It's a real pain. So um, in terms of like real world use, these are not ideal, but for, you know, again, run and gun situations, pretty decent. All right, let's get on to the next one. All right, next up on our list is the Sony B1M. And this is the microphone that I have on my camera almost all the time. Again, this is the FX3 that I use it with. And the great thing about the B1M is it's a digital input, so it is completely wireless. It just plugs directly into the hot shoe, fire up your camera, and you are off and running. The other nice thing about this is you have a couple different polar patterns. You can either use it as an omnidirectional microphone, so it picks up all of the ambient sound. You can use it as a cardioid, which is the, the, the mode that I use it in most often. Uh, and then it also goes into this, I'll call it a super cardioid, where it really is a focused beam on what's in front and really doesn't uh, pay much attention to what's in the back. But again, a cardioid is kind of the nice blend between all of them. But there are a lot of situations actually where I want a lot of the environment, especially if I'm out filming, let's say, in the woods and I want to hear some birds and trees rustling or whatever, right? So I have the microphone right now on omnidirectional, so you should be able to hear some of the environment as well as my voice. And listen to those birds. Along with the construction equipment in the background. Right, so you just turn on Omni and then it, it captures the entire soundscape, which is really, really cool. It is expensive at $350, but I think that at $350, it can replace so many other microphones or things that you would need to get good, clean audio on your, your camera. And the fact that it has no wires, it's super light, it's very convenient, it is worth all of $350, and honestly, it's probably worth a little bit more than that. So I love this B1M. I think they make a smaller one, which is a little bit less expensive, but I would say, you know, for the extra $100 or however much uh, it costs, just go with the, the larger one that, that is going to get you the, the best quality audio uh, at that $350 price point. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so right now you're listening to the Tentacle Sync Track E, and this is something that I have had recording the entire time. I absolutely love the Tentacle Sync system. It's easy, it's convenient. Uh, I've done a couple of videos, videos now on Tentacle Sync, and the Track E is just so easy. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Uh, like, if you're in a situation where you just want something where you just like fire it up, get it, you know, especially with other Tentacle Sync products, just turn it on, hit record, and boom, you're off and running. And you don't have to worry about anything, literally nothing, right? Because it's 32-bit float, and even if the audio is clipping, you can always pull it back and post. I try and set mine up somewhere in the middle so I don't have to pull it up very much. I don't have to pull it down very much. It should just be like pretty, you know, set my levels appropriately, depending on the, t the type of situation that I'm in. But anyways, for the home office, even this isn't bad. Uh, I would imagine the sound isn't as good as something like this. You know, this is the Earthworks ethos, but uh, I would imagine it sounds good enough. And for a lot of folks, that's really all that you need. It's certainly going to be better than the camera audio, which I showed you at the beginning of this video, which is not particularly good. So if it's the option of this versus the camera audio, I'm going to choose this all day long. Now, I will say it is expensive, right? It's $350, but it's the type of thing that you invest in once and it will last you. I don't even know how many years, but I am about a year and a half into using this and I have had zero issues. I mean, zero issues. I've had some other uh, questions I've had specifically for Tentacle Sync that they were able to address and their customer support is second to none. They are so good. I think they're based in Germany and they're just awesome. Highly recommend Tentacle Sync, the Track E, super handy. Absolutely love these. 32-bit float. Once you get something that records in 32-bit float, it is virtually impossible to go to something other than that because there are, there are just countless situations, especially if you are a solo content creator where you're managing a lot of things already, to then have to manage audio is very difficult. So 32-bit float, the way to go. Anyways, let's jump on to the next one. All right, now we've gotten to the point of the video where most people have probably fast forwarded to, and that is a test of the SM7B. 
This microphone retails for around $400. I think it does go on sale from time to time. In fact, I think $400 might be the sale price, but it is just a classic microphone that so many people use and for good reason. For starters, it's really easy on the ears for any type of long form content. There's no like sibilance. There's no um, unwanted noises in it. It's just a good, clean microphone. The other thing is it's extremely durable. The build quality on this is just exceptional. This is the kind of thing that's going to last a lifetime for sure. Now this next thing is it's probably a little subjective, but I find it particularly good looking. Um, and I think that's important, especially if it's something that's going to be on camera. Are there better looking microphones? Sure. But Huh, get that sure sure like that um, but I will say that this one is kind of a classic good looking microphone I, I, I do like the way that it looks and then lastly at $400 it does represent a very good value I find that um, that's kind of the sweet spot for microphones anything more than that and it's really the law of diminishing returns where you're just not seeing as big an improvement as what you would hope to see in a more expensive microphone now what are the cons with this particular microphone well number one is most of the time you're going to require some type of cloud lifter or mic booster or some type of something that gives it additional gain. Now I have this going into my Zoom F6 so there is plenty of gain in there. I don't know how many decibels of gain this is. I want to say it's probably around 70, 72, something like that. So it is plenty of gain coming out of the F6 to power this microphone. but. For a lot of audio interfaces, especially ones that you would connect to your computer, it's not going to be enough. Those are around 50, 55 decibels of gain, so you might end up having to purchase a cloud lifter, which adds about $150. Now, I have done a review on an alternative to that. In fact, I'll put that over here. Uh, it's called the Clark Technic CM1, and they also have a CT1 as well, which is kind of an inline uh, mic booster, and those are great products for a fraction of the price. And I found them comparable so that I actually tested out a cloud lifter versus the Clark Technic and I found that the Clark Technic was exactly the same. Maybe it sounded a hair different, but for the average listener, indiscernible. There's just no way that you're going to be able to tell the difference. Now, the other thing with this particular microphone is it is it's just a little bit too dark for my taste. I know you can EQ it, but again, not really into like modifying the audio. I just want it to sound good like right out of the box. And then the last piece is, is this thing is really uh, in everything right now. Like everyone's got an SM7B. I, I don't know. It's just like lost its uniqueness since everybody has it. So I don't know if that's necessarily a con. It could be a pro like, you know, it's kind of the industry standard, I guess. So maybe for a lot of folks, they might want that. But uh, for me, I don't know. I just like, like something that's a little bit more original. I don't know. Highly subjective. Your your opinion may be very different than mine. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. All right, we are in the home stretch here, folks. Now you are listening to the EV, the Electro Voice RE20. This is a dynamic microphone, cardioid, polar pattern. It is a direct competitor to the SM7B. I think it sounds very good. It's a little bit brighter than the SM7B, and that's something that I really enjoy. In addition to that, it has this technology called variable, variable D technology, which essentially means that you can get a little bit further away from the microphone and it shouldn't sound all that different. If you're a little bit off axis, it, it should also sound very similar. Again, I'm just talking um, around the microphone here. Now, that was my dog racing around in the background because the mailman is outside and she's got to protect the house. Of course she does. But anyways, this is one of the benefits of a dynamic microphone versus a condenser microphone. You probably don't hear her barking in the background, or maybe you do, but it's much more subtle than what it would be if this was a condenser microphone. So anyways, this is the RE20. I think it's right around $450. And I love, 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 love this black color as opposed to the kind of battleship gray, which is the color the standard color that it comes in um, and I've also got this shock mount and this was from a Heil uh, I forgot which model number but it's uh, that also was right around hundred dollars so this setup here is five hundred fifty dollars which is quite a bit but again this is something that's going to last a lifetime it is a just well built it's a hunk of metal it's awesome I love it um, will I keep it 
I don't know. I might sell it. I might not. I haven't decided yet. But anyways, this is a test of the RE20. Again, this is a dynamic microphone, RDOID polar pattern. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, this crazy contraption that I have in front of me right now, this is the Audio-Technica BP4025. And this is really meant for ambient recordings. It's not meant for a home office, but I threw it in here because I have it. It is a condenser microphone. It's considered a stereo omni uh, directional pickup pattern because there's uh, capsules on both sides of the microphone. And uh, maybe I'll throw up a, a picture here of what it looks like from the manufacturer. But anyways, this thing is so ridiculously sensitive. So it will pick up like a pin drop. I have no idea what the self noise is, but it's I think very low and you have to be really careful when you're using it. I tried using it just in my travels here. Again, I'm in an urban environment and it just did not work out for me. It was just overwhelming. It was, it was just too much. It was too sensitive. So anything and everything just gets all captured by this particular microphone. So in an urban environment, I would definitely not recommend it. But if you are in a situation where you're going out into the woods and you're just standing put and just capturing some audio of the environment, it's incredible because it is so sensitive and it's going to ca capture just so much of the sound around you. And it can really create a nice soundscape. And it's expensive too, $650. And I feel like for that amount of money, I, I probably should have um, done a little bit more research. As a point of comparison, those other two microphones that we t that I showed you earlier from Immersive Soundscapes, uh, each one for a stereo pair for $100 each, that is a much better value and it makes so much more sense for someone like myself living in a again an urban environment but for someone who's living out in the woods uh, then this is a fantastic microphone for you or if you want to capture all of the urban landscape that's cool too it just for me it was just overwhelming and I didn't know what to do with it so um, I, I don't use this particular microphone all that much but anyways how does it sound in the office because that's what we're doing today we're testing all the microphones here in the home office. We, and speaking of being in the home office, we are in the home stretch, folks. One more microphone to go. Can you guess which one it is? Let's go. And the last microphone that we have is something that I have been recording on the entire time, the Earthworks Ethos. This is a broadcast condenser microphone. It is, in my opinion, the best type of microphone for the home office like this. It is a super cardioid polar pattern. And it just sounds, I think, terrific. Now, one thing I did do is I replaced the windscreen that came with it with this one, which is much thinner. What I found is that provided windscreen really cut down on some of the higher frequencies. So there wasn't much of those air frequencies coming through. And it just sounded, again, a little bit too dark for my taste. But for others, uh, maybe they prefer that and that's fine you know that's cool and I've, I've listened to a couple of other reviewers talk about this particular microphone and uh, you know they like that darker sound it sounds very similar to an SM7B here's the kicker with this microphone right now and this is the reason why I am keeping it and this is probably going to be my daily driver here in my home office is because it originally retailed for $700 and I had my eye on it at $700 and I almost pulled the trigger, but I was like, do I really need a $700 microphone for videos like this and my 250 subscribers soon to be more than that. Thank you very much. Reminder again, press that like button, press that subscribe button. If you are interested in learning more, this microphone is on sale right now for $400 and at $400, it is a bargain. I don't think you can get anything else out there that is built of this quality this has these looks it's just awesome it really is this triad ball mount should be standard on every single microphone that is sold in the universe i mean this is just ridiculous i mean it's so easy to move the microphone around and get it in the perfect position for however you want it um i don't know why others don't do this but this is so sensible and it just makes perfect sense so uh, anyways i love this microphone what do you think thank you again for watching again if you did find value in this video i just kindly ask that you smash the like button and again click that subscribe button down below to be notified of future videos thanks for watching take care